The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to stay tuned and be inspired. Our special guest today is Greg Gorga, and Greg is the Executive Director of the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum. Welcome, Greg. Thank you, great to be here. Gosh, I, was, I can hardly wait to hear all the wonderful things going on at the Maritime Museum, including that surfboard display that I saw. <laughs> yeah, we've been busy, so happy to be back open. Oh, I bet you are. And, and tell us about the, um, the number of visitors coming in there. Is it more, is it less, are you happy with that? Yeah, you know, Santa Barbara has been very busy destination-wise, the hotels are pretty full. So our admissions have actually been double what they were pre-COVID two years ago. So it's been a double. great summer. Wow, double what it was pre-COVID. That's saying something. Yeah, I think people want to get out. And plus yeah. we have that beautiful Rennie Yater surfboard exhibit and people yeah. love surfing here in Santa Barbara. And yeah. it's beautiful artwork. So yeah, so we've had a, a great summer already. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. And so I hear that you have a, a new accreditation. Tell, tell us about that. Sure, so there's the American Alliance of Museums. It's sort of the national organization for museums. And they have an accreditation program. And there's over 33,000 museums in the United States and less than 1,100 are, are accredited. Oh. <laughs> and, and only cow. a small handful right here in Santa Barbara. And so we had about a four year process to, oh, to do this. Wow. And, but we did get a 10 year accreditation, their full accreditation. What was really nice is their committee noted that uh, they really uh, noted what the Maritime Museum does to close the wealth gap and all the work we do with Title I low income schools oh. and families. And then also, and it's project based learning that we tend to do, and they really enjoyed that. They also commented that our code of ethics and our navigator circle, which is our program of larger donors, mm -hmm. who should be an example for other museums. Oh so, man. So that was a very nice uh, kudo for, that they gave to us. So Well, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And, and you know, this means that you know, we're following best practices yep. and, and we're transparent and it really will allow us to get a, a larger traveling exhibits that oh. uh, some museums might not necessarily uh, give to a museum that is not accredited and we're hoping that'll allow us to get some larger grants oh. uh, from uh, certainly federal found, uh, uh, grant programs and things like that that will help provide funding for all the wonderful education programs and exhibits that we tend to do. Oh, that is great. Yeah. It will also, I think, help donors feel more sure that their donations are going you know, in the way that they're intended and all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it means that you have a proper disaster plan, you have a proper gift acceptance policy, that you're taking good care of artifacts, and that you're financially sta stable and sustainable. So that's so important. certainly uh, important to donors as well. And speaking of donors, if someone wants to donate, they can go on your website, and I bet you have a Donate Now button. Absolutely, <laughs> at sbmm.org. It's really easy to find us, sbmm.org. You can uh, sign up for membership there. Oh. You could find out about plan giving, and you could become a member of our Navigator Circle. Uh, yeah, so, and we're doing a lot of fun things with our Navigator Circle members. So yeah, there's lots of uh, things. And uh, the website, I also should mention, has really become a learning tool. So during COVID, the staff oh. are really busy and have added so much to our website. You know, there's days where I was like, what, we had that on the website too? Oh my God. Yeah, so uh, you could explore our harbor. We have a, a treasure hunt in the harbor on the website. We have a page called SBMM at home because you know, a lot of families during COVID were stuck at home, but they could go outdoors or teachers were always looking for activities for their kids. Oh, I'll bet. Uh, even on Zoom. And so uh, we put our Maritime on the Move program online in English and Spanish. We put our first exhibit online, uh, our Brooks models, those 
wonderful 30 plus ship models we have. We started a curator's log. Oh. Uh, yeah. And we, I did a narrated tour of the museum. So if you couldn't come to the museum, you could you know, watch me talk about the, all the different exhibits. And then, of course, our monthly lectures have always been on, yes. on uh, actually, because TV Santa Barbara records them. Yay for them. Yeah, yeah. So those are always on our website. But we also did our science nights. We used to go out to the schools mm -hmm. and do science nights with all the young kids and have different maritime programs. We recorded some of those and put them on the website, too. That is astounding. Yeah. You're a busy guy. <laughs> well, uh, we have a great staff. They, <laughs> yeah. they, they stayed home during COVID, but they didn't, uh, they were very busy. Yeah. So they worked hard during COVID. So yeah, it's been great. Yeah. So how many staff do you have? So now we're up to, uh, we actually have been hiring like everybody else. We had a little trouble finding staff. Yeah. Uh, we were only open four days a week until recently, but now we're back open six days a week, closed Wednesdays. But we have seven full-time staff, counting myself, and 15 part-time staff. And, wow. You know, we do a lot for, with the little staff. We have I'd a, say. a hard-working staff. They're all wearing different hats. Um, you know, titles, you know, you can't even put all the titles on a business card for most of my staff because they're doing two or three different things that, you know, you know other organizations have, you know, dedicated staff with. So, so they've been great. They've been working hard and, and getting a lot done. Oh, gosh. That is... That's wonderful. Now, what about volunteers? So we absolutely depend on volunteers. Oh, okay. So I know you've been up to our fourth floor visitor yes, center, which yes. is a collaboration with the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, National Park Service, and the City of Santa Barbara. So we staff that with our volunteers seven days a week. So that's even open on Wednesdays when the museums close. Oh. Best view in Santa Barbara. Yes. So I tried to have that become my office, but they, the, the, the <laughs> they board didn't agree. Yeah, no, no kidding. <laughs> So we definitely need volunteers for there. We are starting to see school groups come through the museum. Right now we've been working with the City of Santa Barbara Parks and Recs Department, their nature camps. They've been coming to the museum every Monday and Tuesday, twice a day. Uh, so we need volunteers for that as well. We hope to get back to um, you know, the overnight tall ship program at some point, uh, marine science program in the winter, uh, and then school tours. So we are always looking for volunteers. We just are finishing up a 10-week uh, docent training program, so that happens once a year, so that um, you can always find out about that on our website mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so, uh, and so we, you know, and we do monthly uh, programming for our volunteers as well. So you'll, if you oh. volunteer at the Maritime Museum, you'll learn a lot about Santa Barbara history. Yeah, I was just gonna say, volunteer, it sounds like volunteers learn a lot. You know, and that's how I learned, you know, so I know, good amount of, mar of our, 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 especially our maritime history here in Santa Barbara. But when I took that job 14 years ago, 14 I had years. no knowledge of anything here in Santa Barbara. But I walked around with our docents, I came to the monthly lectures, I read some books on the side, and everything, but it's been, you know, I've learned on the job. So it's, you get a lot of education by being a volunteer at the Maritime Museum. Wow. So I hope a lot of folks sign up to be a volunteer. That sounds like fun. Yeah, and you get to meet some young kids or do some older adult tours and things like that. So you'll meet a lot of people there as well. Gosh. And our, the fourth floor, you're getting visitors from all over the world. Oh. So we get, you know, normal times, a lot of people from Europe, Asia, everywhere. So, so you can get to meet a lot of interesting people volunteering at the Maritime Museum. Well, I know, I know you have a great team. Mm -hmm. I also know that your leadership has been really essential in all of this progress, and it's uh, just something to be very proud of. Thank you, thank you. Helps have a great staff. But we, it does. And, and a great board. We have a, oh, a, yes, a great, yes. and the, you know, we have, committees as well, so uh, we use volunteers everywhere. Um, but yeah, it's, thank you for that. It's been, uh, but it's easy to lead a good team, so that's nice. Well, and so someone could also find out if, about board uh, membership uh, on your website. Absolutely, so we uh, suggest they start out with one of our committees, uh -huh. and we have a, about a dozen committees, so everything from marketing, education, exhibits, uh, fundraising, uh, fundraiser events, uh, facilities, um, all sorts of different committees. So it's best to get involved with the museum uh, if you want it, if you're interested in a board position mm -hmm. at the committee level and you learn about us and we learn about you and then, uh, and then move on up into a board position. And we have a pretty big board right now. We have about 23 or 24 members. Wow, we. And it's been, uh, we are up to 27 at one point. So it's a, a, a pretty active board there. Uh, most of them are on committees. Uh, they come to the events and, and they have fun with it. 
Gosh, that is great. Yeah. Now, um, tell us about some of your uh, programs. Maritime, you mentioned Maritime on the Move. What, yeah, so you know, right, be, so uh, this program, you know about our tall ship program where yes. we bring in kids, they read two years before the mass by Richard Henry Dana, spend the night on the tall ship. Great program, you learn by doing. Really great program for kids who have learning challenges, language challenges, because it's all hands on. And we do that program countywide. We'd have 20 classes, 20 nights, uh, and a lot, and mostly two thirds of them, the schools were coming from Title I schools, low income schools, okay. and some from the North County. Well, that program, you, uh, we ask that six or seven parents stay on board with their kids mm -hmm. as safety officers, because yeah. you are on a boat, yeah. anything can happen. And, uh, but you know, for our families coming out of the North County, that was a full two day commitment. Yeah. Uh, you know, you had to be at the museum by two in the afternoon. You had to leave Santa Maria, Orcutt, Guadalupe by 11 in the morning. And then you're on the bo boat until nine in the morning and, and didn't get back home till one or two. So for some working families, that was tough. And yeah. so they asked us to create a program. Uh, that we had the idea and, or, and it just kind of worked out on that need to do a program where families can learn about their own backyard. Ah. So we uh, pr uh, piloted that program in Carpinteria right. right before COVID. Uh -huh. We had 160 sixth graders. 160? Spend, yeah, we had like, <laughs> they were in, I don't know, we had a lot of volunteers for that. We had naturalists, uh, we, so we had seven or eight different groups and they did, uh, walked quite a bit, four miles, and they went to the salt marsh, they went oh. to the uh, natural oil seeps oh, gosh. along the beach. They went to the seal rookery and counted pups. And then they dug up sand crabs and looked for indicator species oh. right on the beach there. And you know, th the whole idea is to explore your own backyard. I was with a group of 18 young kids and I think nine of them had never been to the salt marsh and they, mm. they live right there, right? And so we, uh, during COVID, put that program online in English and Spanish mm. so that families could access it. We created, uh, we had the one for Carpinteria, we created one for the harbor, Santa Barbara Harbor, and one for Oso Flaco Lake. Oh. Which you don't even have to be young kids. I have donors who saw that on our website, went up and discovered Oso Flaco Lake and had never even been there and told all their friends and went back again. So, oh my gosh. really wonderful program, really gets kids to um, just explore the history of our, our maritime uh -huh. uh, life here, but also the resources that are available, the recreation uh, uh, opportunities, playing around in the ocean, uh, uh, and all about the, the natural wonders of our Santa Barbara channel. Oh my gosh. And so we have been doing that program now with City of Santa Barbara uh, groups. Uh, Holly Loheis, who worked all over the world with Jean-Michel Cousteau, oh, golly. is one of our, uh, our consultants and oh. works on that program. Uh, to be honest, we've had Jean-Michel uh, oh. Cousteau show up. I think what he's been a, a little quiet at home or at his office. <laughs> and I don't think all the kids understand who he is, <laughs> right. but we're very excited. And he's yeah. telling the kids about the Channel Islands mm -hmm. and the Chumash history and, and about whales out there at the islands and, and going through our channel. And so what's really nice is the Alliance, the American Alliance of Museums, that AAM who accredited us, uh, that program is one of their finalists for innovative education programs nationwide. Oh man. Our staff was asked to present on that program at the Council of American Maritime Museums National Conference. And then just a few days ago, the California Association of Museum uh, awarded that program their Secretary's Public, Public Education oh for Sustainability Award because it talks about sustaining our yeah, oceans. Yeah, sure. And so uh, we've gotten three wonderful recognitions for that program and so our staff deserve all the credit. Uh, Liz Perry is our Director of Education. She's worked closely with Holly and in our Education Committee. Um, and wow. that's just one of the great programs they've worked on. But yeah, so we are very proud of, uh, of all the recognition that's getting. As you should be. I say we go out and wave the flag about the Maritime <laughs> yeah, Museum. Yeah, right? Thank you. How lucky we are to have you right in our community. Thank you. And the kids love it. I mean, it's really about, you know, they're learning and, and learning to care for our oceans. Ah, uh, yes. You know, learning yes. not to put plastic in the, in the yeah. tra you know, put it away properly. Don't let it get into the waters. Uh, but they're also learning about uh, kelp and what all the kelps are used for, uh -huh. the breakwater. They walk on the breakwater, see all the fishing boats, learn about what they're used for. They, you know, we have that sand spit at the end of the breakwater. Well, yeah. how did that sand get there? Oh, you know, gosh. we have natural currents, so they learn all about that. So it's, that it's a great program. Great.
So let's say that somebody's listening to this and they're curious about what membership means. I want to be a member. What, what, what do you do to be a member? What, what happens if you're a member? Sure, so you can sign up for membership on our website at sbmm.org. You can come to the museum and just get a membership right there at the, uh, our store or you can just mail in a membership and you get free admission for a year. We have everything from a senior membership, individual, uh -huh. family, and then higher end memberships like our Navigator Circle. Uh, you know, with any membership you get, I mean, the membership start at $45 you get over $100 worth of discounts all around the harbor at all oh, different businesses. Wow. But you also get special invitations, you get our free lectures, uh, special invitations to events, advance notice on some of the fun excursions that we're doing. So in February, we're going out to San Ignacio Lagoon Ooh. to interact with the gray whales there. Oh, uh, we've man. We've taken groups out to the Anacapa Island, out to the Honda disaster, which is on Vandenberg Air Base. Uh -huh. where Seven Navy destroyers crashed almost 100 years ago. Oh, gosh. Uh, so, yeah, there's lots of benefits to being a member, uh, the, you know, access to a lot of different programming, but also you're supporting all the work that we do. Yeah. You know, it's, we need money to do, uh, take those kids I'd out on those say. overnight programs yeah. and the marine science program. So you're also supporting all that education programming. And you get invited to special receptions when we open a new exhibit, That's which is great. really nice. And we open three to four, sometimes five exhibits a year. Wow. Yeah. So we have a minute or two left. Is there anything else that you'd like people to know about the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum? Sure. So as you mentioned, right now we currently have the wonderful surfboards by Rennie Yader. Yeah. He wanted to honor the wooden surfboard uh, uh, era from 1885 to 1959. He created those boards. They're faux boards. They're painted to look like heavy wooden boards. And then an artist named John Comer painted surf scenes from different uh, beaches along California coastline uh -huh. from those time periods. And so that's there for a few more months. And then Ralph Clevenger, who used to teach underwater photography at the Brooks Institute, oh, gosh. Uh, used to hire mermaids and sh <laughs> for photography lessons for his students. So we're gonna have a photography exhibit of mermaids. Oh golly. There is talk that some actual mermaids will make an appearance at the Santa Barbara Harbor when we open wow. that exhibit. Uh, and then after that, we've been working with about a, a, a 10 or so other museums throughout the county to do a, a collaborative exhibit on climate change. Oh. And we're going to talk about whales and how they are an indicator for climate change uh, variances, in, especially here in the Santa Barbara Channel. And so that'll happen in the spring of 2022. So lots of fun, new exhibits coming as well. Yeah, I guess. That's that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. And it's always great to work with other organizations. Uh, in fact, that uh, California Association of Museums, the Wilding Museum, also got a, a sustainable award oh, at the same great. time we did. So we work very closely, especially during COVID, with all the other museums in towns. So, you know, Santa Barbara is so fortunate to have yeah. such a wide assortment of really top world-class museums here in, yeah. the, in the channel. In the, into the, in the community, and so we're just really happy to be a part of that. Yeah, and I'd say the maritime right at the top. <laughs> well, thank you, and I appreciate all that you do for nonprofits. Oh, so thank you. It is very helpful. You are a strong advocate for the work that <laughs> we all do here. Well, we're all so lucky in this community, aren't we, to have so many wonderful nonprofits? It really is, you know, and you know, they say it's the second most uh, nonprofits per capita in yeah, the country. That's and right. you know, we all benefit from that, you know, not only the people that we serve, but the whole community, I that's think, right. benefits in so many yeah. different ways. It makes Santa Barbara the special place that it is. That is true. Yeah. Well, Greg, thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you for all the amazing, wonderful work that you're doing there at the museum. Thank you. Always a pleasure to be here with you. <laughs> And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.